All right, folks, welcome back to the shed. So in today's video, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and adjust the valves on this 125 engine. If you can, get service manual for your motorbike or maintenance manual. Uh, I've got this one for the Zongshen Pursuit or the Lex Motor Ranger as it's known in the UK. Um, the only thing being now, motorcycles are not really coming with these maintenance books anymore. You know, that this used to be commonplace thing when you bought any motorcycle back in the day. You know, you would get the user manual, you would get the maintenance manual, and this one even comes with a parts catalogue as well. And this is actually a full maintenance book. This actually gives you a full tear down of the engine and the motorbike. Same as a Haynes manual, but direct from the manufacturer. Anyway, moving on and dealing with this motorbike. Right guys, taking a quick look at the tools we're going to need for this job and about the most specialised tool you're going to need is these feeler blades. Now these can be picked up from Halford, Screwfix, Tool Station and all car parts uh, to name a few. Make sure you get a set that have got a good selection of blades and the next thing you'll need is a selection of sockets to remove the cam cover, a Allen wrench, flathead screwdriver to remove the viewport for the flywheel, spanner to undo the lock nut on the valve adjustment and a tool for holding the adjustment screw while you tighten up the lock nut. So that's the, the basic tools you're going to need. Uh, obviously you're going to need a T-bar or a ratchet, either or, I actually prefer the T-bar for when I'm finding the correct timing spot, extension bar, not necessary but always handy to have, a couple of other tools, smaller ratchet if you need it, Any other spanners you may need and a pick for cleaning out any allen bolts. Right guys, moving over to the motorbike. We have here a project motorbike which is why it's currently in bits. But this doesn't make any difference to the job that we're going to do today. Go ahead and make sure your work area is clear and that you have access to the motorbike. Now we do need access to the engine. So, if you have any side panels, then remove them. You may have to remove the petrol tank. This depends on the bike and how comfortable you feel with the access you've got. Well, we'll remove the cam cover. Now when I'm working with the ratchet, if I have space I like to use a short extension bar and the reason for that is I can then use the extension bar like a screwdriver which is much easier than fighting with the a ratchet. Right, once the cam cover bolts are removed, 
we'll just go ahead and remove the cam cover. We'll leave the bolts in place because that's the best place to keep them. They're not going to get lost then. And they're not going to get mixed up. Some cam covers will have different length bolts depending on the design. So it's always a good idea to keep them well organised. Now we have the cam cover removed. We'll move on to the side panel so we can access the flywheel. Now these are Allen or hex nuts. It's always a good idea just to get a small pick or a small screwdriver. And just make sure that they are well clear and that you can get the Allen key or Allen wrench fully into the the bolt head just to save yourself a headache of stripping out a bolt. As you can see, these ones are not in the best of condition as it is, so it's always a good practice just to clear them out. Make sure you've got the nicest fit before you start. Once we have this cover off, now, as you see, this is a full plate that covers most of this side panel. However, your cover may just be a smaller circle here or a sort of oval. But, but they all serve the same function. Once move move that clear, you can see, or you will see, you can see in here we have the head of a bolt. We'll go ahead and get the socket, which in this case is a 15 millimeter. Yours may be a different size. Moving on guys, if we remove this port up top here, we now have access to see the timing marks on the flywheel. The other thing to note, the other thing to note here is that you can see just here, there's a notch in the threads. And this is the notch we line our timing mark up to. Alright guys, we need a quick explainer on how a four-stroke engine works. Now, a four-stroke engine requires four strokes with one piston to complete a cycle. And these include intake, compression, combustion and exhaust. Or the one you're more likely to remember is suck, squeeze, bang, blow. Now this means piston reaches top dead centre twice on one cycle and to properly adjust the valves we have to be on the right top dead centre within that cycle. And the proper top dead centre is top dead centre on the squeeze cycle. So now we're going to find the correct top dead centre. We'll get our socket of T-bar and what we'll do is rotate the engine and we'll watch the valves and see which one is the next one to open. So we can see our exhaust valve is opening. So that's the blow cycle. And we should see intake valve opening, yep. So that's our so that's our suck cycle. So we're now on the compression cycle. So if we watch there's our timing marks coming up. So 
So T for our top dead centre. And that's us at top dead centre. So now they're at the right top dead centre. Both valves are closed and if we move the rocker arms we can hear both of them have some movement. So we're just going to double check our timing marks. Alright guys, going back to the rocker arms. What we'll do is grab our feeler gauges and I'll set this to 0.08mm and we'll check this gap. And what we'll do is I'll zoom in a bit. So we'll get a better view on that. So when checking a gap with feeler gauges you want the gauge to go into the gap with a little resistance but not enough that you're having to force the blade in. If you're having to force the blade in then the gap is smaller than what the feeler blade is. I'm going to move up to point 0.1 yeah so I'm really having to force that through so what you want to do is go ahead and loosen this nut here and this is a lock nut that keeps an adjustment set in place now if you have a proper adjustment spanner to fit on this then go ahead and use it if not a pair of clamping pliers will do just the same go ahead and put a spanner onto the locking nut right and then we'll clamp them on the adjustment so again we're just going to slide that in there and we'll just go ahead and get that to where we just feel it catching and we're going to hold that in place and we're going to tighten that up and we're going to make sure that or we're going to do our best to make sure we don't move the adjustment so we're getting that blade through there but it's just the right amount of friction We'll snug that up. Right, so what we'll do is we'll get the other side done. Crack that loose and we'll get our pliers on there. Now it's good to note here that you don't allow the tools to push down the rocker arm. Because obviously then, you're not getting the right setting. Right. Hey guys, now that we've adjusted the valves, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll turn this engine over. We we'll just rotate it over four or five times just to get everything to settle back down in place. We'll find our top dead centre again. Just ease it round to the top dead centre, which is where we're at. And once we've done that, we'll go ahead and grab the fuel gauges again and we'll check the gap. Hey right, folks, we've adjusted our valves and we've rebuilt the engine. Now from here, you can go ahead and put your tank back on and your fairings if you've had to remove them. Hopefully, now that your valves are adjusted, your engine will run better and it will sound better. Anyway guys, that's it for today's video. 
Until next time, I'll catch you later. Alright well, guys, if you like this one, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see my future videos, then please subscribe and ring the bell for notifications of when I release new videos.